So we'll just definitely do the recording and then we will just jump into um you will just edit it down yes. to yes. specifically what you want, right? Yeah. So she will do all the editing and everything. Do you have a logo, by the way? A logo? Yeah. Um, a logo for my person for my dessert page, but not for my personal brand. Okay. I just use one comment. I'll just yeah, the billionaire chef. I'm just gonna act, do act billionaire chef for everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Sounds great. Well, I know you gave me a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff on the in the email, so that's perfect. I could just copy and paste all of that stuff when I'm doing everything, so that's so good. Yeah. Anyway. Awesome. Okay, well, let's get started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, Javon. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you, Carrie. Nice to finally see you in person. I know you're yeah. a pretty guy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, nice to finally meet you. Uh, I know we have been going back and forth for a little bit, and actually saying that the time was a perfect, was actually it came up to be a perfect timing to do the interview and just sit back and just have a great conversation. Yeah, well, I am just, I think, super grateful as well because, you know, I know this is obviously not just being a busy time for the Easter and, you know, especially this time of the year, but um, I know you have a lot going on. You you know, beside everything happening at Tapestry, you know, I know I know you always have a lot going on. So I think for me to get started, I just want to first ask you how what really swayed you into becoming a chef in the first place? Ah, uh, um <laughs> infamous chef question. Uh I would say that my grandma uh influenced me into becoming a chef well seeing her and seeing her in the kitchen creating these different dishes and obviously that that created a memory for me and always seeing her i always wanted to be able to join her in the kitchen uh but obviously i was too young at some point so when i finally become of age to go in the kitchen to cook with her it was almost it felt right it felt easy and she would show me every little detailed thing. And obviously that created a great memory for me. So even some things I'm then creating memories, creating menus, sorry. I usually, I remember doing a menu and I remember saying from grandma's kitchen and it was legit things that I remembered my grandma doing. And it was just based on that. Even the flavors when they create them, everything's about her. So I really think that I've learned to, I've got interested in cooking based on her and going over to her house on evenings and just seeing her cook. Uh, my mom also, but obviously my grandma will obviously, I think, better cook. I go that hopefully my mom doesn't see this in you. Yeah, um, I, think, I think we'll see the heritage part of this and especially with us and our Caribbean roots. Somehow I feel it always goes back to our grandmothers. Yeah, it's, it's very <laughs> Yeah, uh, and of course our mothers, we have to give respect to our mothers, but you know, there is this really strong heritage, I think with Caribbean people and obviously, because I'm trying to represent, uh, you know, uh, Barbados this month. Again, it's, you know, that kind of like, okay, cooking from home and the, the traditions that we get from home, really, that lead us yeah. in that direction. Um, but I think also what I wanted to know, too, is because of the whole, I think, um, Bayesian background and, you know, obviously the kind of cuisine that you're in now, uh, how important is it for you to really represent, um, you know, Barbados in your food and, and obviously internationally? Uh, it's always important to represent our local cuisine on a local level and on an international level because I feel it is, it's who we are, it's the culture. And obviously me going to competitions, going to events overseas and seeing other international chefs representing their country in their way, however that way may be. It's always great to see them doing it. So I always try to be as authentically Bajan as possible, Caribbean. I always say Bajan and Caribbean because if you have some extension, it always is the Caribbean because Bajan is where I'm from, but usually going to these big countries is usually narrowed down to you also have to represent in Caribbean because they, sometimes you're just the only Caribbean chef there. So I would say that representing my local culture first and foremost is definitely, um, it's a big deal to me uh, wherever I go. 
Yeah, I mean, I know from a lot of this stuff that I actually have read about you and, you know, I think having a, a kind of a deep creative spirit, you know, and obviously I think that probably also transcend, transcends into other areas of your life, uh, but especially, I guess, with cooking, um, this, I think, is a, such an important area to really represent who we are and, yeah. you know, and, and what we can say through our food. I mean, I always like to go back to the whole reason why I started this whole Saucy Caribbean thing. It's because not just I love food, but, you know, I just love to share food and, and obviously share, share my culture with people so they can see that, you know, we are very much a culture about, you know, just food and enjoying being together. Yeah, um, definitely. Obviously, it's as a special time like this. But, you know, I think looking at someone like you who has achieved so many awards and you know you've I know you've been to the James Baird um, house to cook as well. Uh, you know all these phenomenal opportunities. Uh, how do you think this has had an impact on on where you want to take the kind of cuisine that you're doing? Because I always think of you as just very creative, eclectic uh, with your dishes, but also trying to stay true to tradition. Yeah, um, I just think that my love and passion for food is 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 a little bigger than I I myself sometimes understand and I think that creating these I would say experience whenever I create a menu is like I want to tell like a story from start to finish whether it's at James Warehouse whether it's an event here in Barbados Food and Rum is that event at Tapestry I just feel like it should be a story and just being creative in general. It, I guess that's the passion I have behind it. And I always want people to leave it a, a sense of that was a great uh, meal, but it was a great experience. I would definitely do it again. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I lost each other. I, I trying to remember the question that you gave me. So. <laughs> no, but I know what you mean. And just for me, I think I look at your dishes and I think, God, you know, you, the way you, I think, not just modernize uh, what what we have, because, I mean, everybody's, you know, we have our classic dishes from each country. Yeah. But I see some of the stuff that you've done with pork. And, you know, I know you don't want to touch certain dishes because you think that, does, you know, let's just not reinvent the wheel with that dish. <laughs> um, but I think what, what, I, what I really want to find out too is like, what keeps you creative and inspired to just you know, make the kind of, you know, delicious meals that you do? Um, I would say you, I like creating great menus. And usually when I do a great menu and I end up, and, yeah, and, it's, and it's a success on the night or whatever day I decide to, to launch the menu and everyone receives it well and everybody's all giving me all the praise. I love, just love to create another experience that's just like that, but obviously from a different perspective. And most of my staff know me as when I create a menu, I do not ever revisit the menu. Is that menu that I, I do, and then I create another one because I just feel like creativity is endless. And the only way you'll get to be as creative as possible is if you continue trying to change and trying to to push the envelope when it comes to food and, and cuisine. Uh, in terms of the creativity aspect, I just like to deconstruct and reconstru reconstruct food, but I don't like to reinvent the wheel. There's a big difference in trying to reinvent the wheel. And to be mm -hmm. honest, it isn't it's a, a wheel to, re to reinvent. Yeah, it's really a balance. And I think, it, yeah, that's what I can see from, like I said, from all the research that I've done um, in everything that you've been trying to do. I also yeah. really like the fact that I think being in that position of a restaurateur type of role as well, and yeah. you know, really uh, putting emphasis too on, on what your customers like and getting that yeah. feedback, you know? So it kind of marries well, I think, with you doing what you're doing and creating what you're creating, but also gaining some feedback from the people that you're actually with and, you know, you're trying to also, you know, expose them to something. Because um, I, I see so many favorable reviews, obviously, um, that's been written. I can't wait to come to Barbados and try everything. Yeah, um, you definitely need to come to Barbados and try something. Yeah. But I also saw something about the fact that 
the staff that you have with you, you know, they're quite young. And I wanted to know if that's a conscientious effort that you really tried to keep, you know, such a young, um, a young group and a young team with you. Um, in all honesty, uh, I think it ended up working out in the end because it always felt like younger people are easier to mold or younger people, younger passionate people are easier to, to they see my vision a little better. And I always remember, and I always say this, I always remember when I was young and finishing culinary school and in culinary school and we had the internships and stuff like that. And you would work at these hotels and these restaurants and just more or less seeing how everything is run. And obviously that is, is a certain age range that is in a hotel or in the restaurant at some point. But then I always felt like when I get my own restaurant or when I become the executive chef or head chef at an establishment, I would like that my team is as, just as young as me but just as motivating and passionate as I am. And I just feel like having that young, and don't get me wrong, some of the more mature people are just as young in heart yes, as the yes, people. Yes. And I just like that. It creates a sense of unity because I feel like it is a vast difference between generations. Millennials are completely different. Uh, Generation Zs are incomplete, but I feel like millennials and gener Generation Z usually get along pretty well because it's more or less in the same, the same spectrum. Yeah. But I feel like we're, I have them, I have a mixture of both of them. And it's been extremely fun to see them come together and create, even when I'm not there, they're sending me messages, chef like at this, you think about this. And I feel like, I give them a, a more of a outlet to be as creative as possible because I have things in my restaurant that it's supposed to be plated this way, but then I have, then I give them free range to experiment on stuff because I feel like when you come into your restaurant and you have a great meal on tapestry, it should be, um, an experience in general. So you having this here one night and, you might happen to see it next week. It's the same exact thing, but it looks a little different. It's the same exact components, all the things are in dishes, but it looks a little different. But it's it stays true to the artistic and the the artistic aspect of the entire restaurant and the hotel, which I always give them leverage to don't be too out there, but keep it in the, the same dimension that you think I would. Yeah. And I think they balance that pretty well when it comes to placing the food because I always tell them people eat with their eyes regardless of however you feel people will eat with their eyes if something looks a little iffy yeah, or isn't really well presented I find that people might hesitate and be like okay I mean like, I might not want to try that but if something comes greatly presented to you and it's on the table and you're just like oh it probably tastes bad but it looks really good people are just like Hmm. I would definitely try it just based on the visual effect that it gave them. So I always tell them, people eat with your eyes, you definitely got to give them the wow effect but as soon as they come to the table. And the plus is usually when it tastes really, really good. And mm -hmm. the food actually tastes, well, not actually, the food is really good. <laughs> well, I think this is, you know, this is the whole thing about passing the torch. You know, yeah. and obviously, you know, I think incorporating that whole um you know, useful element to it because I've had so many conversations during this month with different people and obviously focusing on Barbados and all the things that have been happening so, so much recently in the country growing and just getting, you know, I, I looked at, um, I think the, the Zagat rating and the fact that Barbados has so many restaurants now that Corona is slowly, well, not quickly passing us by, yeah. you know, the, the hotel industry and the restaurants can be like, oh, we're guessing a break now. Um, it's just great to see that a country like Barbados remains really competitive with the- Yeah, I, as one thing I would say, Beijing's are very competitive. Yes, yes, love that. Yeah, well, of course, my, my, last, my last question always has to be, is everything okay? <laughs> Everything is okay. I just got a neighbor. <laughs> My neighbor is building a house. It's this huge house that he's building, and he's. That's typical. You know, that's typical in the Caribbean. 
<laughs> There's always something right? going on, somebody building something. <laughs> yeah, it's always somebody building something. So I wanted to pull in the window just in case I muffle that song a little bit. Just give you me a second. Hide the fact that you know I need to let everybody know that you're you're in the Caribbean so they can be jealous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so- if you want, if you want, I can let it stay. If you want, I can let it stay. No, it's fine. Well, my last, my last question has to do more with you and what's next for the billionaire chef. Because I just see the sky's the limit, really. And, you know, what do you, what do you see happening, really, for you? And where do you want to take things, you know, not just Bayesian food, but, you know, just you? What, what are some of the things you want to do? Uh, my plans are to really just keep creating and challenging myself and mentoring the younger generation, of, of honestly. Because I just feel like there's... You have a lot of knowledge and it can only be passed on. Um, I always tell people there will only be one Javon at the end of the day because Javon sees things in his own lens. But you can definitely grow from certain things you see Javon doing and you can twist it into your own into your own perspective. Uh, in terms of doing something, I am working on something very special so that everyone can stay tuned to that. Um, but I always have something going just to keep me motivated because I feel like some music get a bit boring when it comes to uh, the whole culinary. It could be boring, especially um, in a hotel um, setting, and it has nothing to do with the hotel. It just has to do that. That's the setting that is there is. Uh, because obviously with the hotel, you're more catered toward guests and rooms and stuff like that. But um, it could be a bit monotonous based on... The setting, I forget what I mean. But I, at Tapestry, I try to like change that whole thing. I try to keep it fresh and refresh and keep it stuck and motivated. I always want to try something new. Uh, but I just think that I, I for one, never saw myself as being a, a mentor. Uh, but I remembered I was on Facebook. I usually don't check my, my Facebook messages as I should. Uh, but I remember my old school principal, he's sending me a Facebook message really from So Strange. Um, and he was just like, uh, you're doing great stuff. No, he came across an article of me before I even saw the article. I can't remember doing the article, but I remember, so when I read, read through the article, I remember, oh yeah, I did answer these questions. And then he was just like, you're a great mentor to the younger people. I really need people to see this. And even my old culinary um, school, everybody is like, they want me to come back. And I always say that I like to come back. I always like to come back. Uh, it's just the whole timing and schedule and stuff like that. But I really think that taking the time out to mentor the younger generation and being an example, really and truly in the culinary, the culinary arena, I feel for younger people to look up to and say like, well, look at Javon, he's being, he's shooting for the sky. And as a Bayesian chef, I really think that it's very, it's great to see because usually we were accustomed, we were accustomed to seeing like expat chefs coming the um, country yeah. and take over these big hotel chains and these big restaurants and stuff like that. And now the local chefs has really stepping up, step, step up to the plate and like they are the ones leading these teams and leading these restaurants and hotels and just pushing the envelope continuously with food and the culinary. So I just really think that in terms of the local chefs on the island, I think that we are doing a very great job um, in terms of like just being up there with the best and with the best of the best in the world. And I just feel like we have a great culinary offering in the Carib- in Barbados. Um, yeah. Because like I tell you, we are very competitive. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> trust and believe when you go to a restaurant or a hotel, the chef would definitely try to make it a great experience from start to finish. This is why I think with you though, you know, people, I won't say just people, but you know, chefs like yourself, it's really integral for someone like you who has a kind of a, um, you know, a, it's a culmination of this desire to be creative with an understanding yeah. of what it is to have a restaurant with also yeah. a desire to mentor. You know, yeah. there's so many like, different kinds of chefs out here. And, you know, it just takes that right kind of combination 
to be able to spread that and encourage, you know, the younger ones to actually get on board with that because they can actually see, hey, I can look at Javon and I can see there's so much possibilities for me. I can do it. I need to put in the hard work. You know, I need to follow. Probably because I know you didn't get there just by luck, you know, <laughs> there's a lot yeah, of hard work, yeah. a lot of hard work, you know, and, and a lot of dedication. So, you know, what would be, what would be a, a little bit of advice that you can, you know, just share to, to young people, um, you know, wanting to follow that path? Uh, I think that you have to want it. You have to be, you have to be serious about where you want to go and where you want to see yourself. Because I feel like when I was 16, 17, and I had my internships, and I was in culinary school, well, finishing culinary school at 16, 17, well, yeah, in culinary school, I was taking my money that I was earning and buying cookbooks. And just, I, my mom and dad could tell you this, I would just go in Charlotte, the mall, or a store, and I would just buy cookbooks. I'll come home and I would dissect the entire cookbook in terms of, fitting it towards Bayesian food and towards ingredients that we have here locally. Because half the ingredients in these books, we I never seen in my entire life at that age. And so when I bought the cookbooks, I was just trying to more or less improvise certain ingredients with some and then doing it di totally differently and then trying to execute it um, to that level or to put in my own little flair on it. Uh, but I just think that younger chefs just need to be as invested and need to be and take it seriously because before i felt that people never take chefs seriously i think no people have a vast more respect for chefs in this day and age um but you need to apply yourself you need to want it you need to put in the work put in the extra to stay up late uh my staff always made this for always made fun of me because they're just like they could only imagine how you write menus because they have a, a whole collection of menus different stuff that I could pull from different stuff. So they were just like, sir, chef, everything is always something new or fresh. And this one stop in my head, she said, I could only imagine how his mind goes when he coming up with this stuff. I told her, it, it's a very weird thing because something I, I might be sleeping and I'll get, I'll be sleeping and I have some strange thing just come over me and I'm just like, okay, that's a perfect combination. I'm gonna be working on something and it come to me in the middle of the night, I would get up take out my phone and put in my notes or I would talk my laptop and type it in. Then in the morning I wake up, I just be like, what is that? You do type. And I'm just like, oh, I, I remember it throughout the day. I'm just like, okay, I I, I know I want to merge with this. And so you need to be very passionate about it to be very honest. Yeah. You need to you really need to want it because I feel like it is one of those things where you can't half ass it. If you want to be great, you gotta go for it. You can't, and like you said, no one's going to hand it to you because at the end of the day, there are hundreds of restaurants on Barbados, in Barbados, and I just feel like everybody is hungry to want to be the best. So you, it's not that you can just sit down there and be like, okay, it'll get hand to me. It's more or less you have to sit down there and put in the work in order for uh, everyone to be like, respect you and and take you seriously because at the end of the day you want people to take you seriously but you still want to be able to showcase your work in uh in a way that people are in awe of what you can do and what you do well i think with that philosophy just generally covering all life <laughs> something that you know i think all of us need to aspire to but i just want to say a massive massive thank you you know for just joining me um you know in this interview and i guess just sharing your story as well because one of the great things that i wanted not just for this month and for the whole representing barbados is just that the caribbean and also for people who do enjoy cooking and enjoy sharing a meal together um it's people like yourselves that actually make a difference in, on so many levels. And I just want to say a huge thank you from a Caribbean person <laughs> for all you guys doing, putting in all that hard work out there. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. It was such a pleasure. It was a pleasure. It really was a pleasure joining you. Hopefully we could meet up and we can have a great event overseas sometime. Yeah. We well, could bring out five chefs and we just have a great Caribbean type festival over there. <laughs> This, this I, I think if I put that energy out there, 
the world will hear me, the, the universe will hear me, and it'll be like, yeah, what yeah, a definitely. festival for Caribbean chefs. <laughs> this is, this because I feel, I feel like everyone wants to come to Caribbean, but not everyone can. So why not just take it to them? Take the Caribbean to them. Europe especially is really missing that. I think they would just, you know, devour, <laughs> devour everything. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much again, my dear. Okay, thanks. It was nice to have you. Bye.